Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I am so excited that you're here with me today for our last installment of Steam Creatures. So, before we get started, do you remember what all the letters in STEAM stand for? Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And we will be using all five of those subject areas today while we learn a little bit more about birds. Birds come in all shapes and sizes, from itty bitty hummingbirds to great big tall emus. Most birds fly, but not all birds. So let's take a moment to look at some pictures and short video clips of birds from around the world while we learn a little bit more. There are over 10,000 different species of birds all over the world. Birds come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. All birds have wings, feathers, lay eggs, and are warm-blooded. The smallest bird is the bee hummingbird, which is only two inches long. The largest bird is the ostrich, which also happens to lay the largest eggs and have the mm -hmm. fastest maximum running speed of up to 60 miles per hour. The majority of birds fly, but there are some that don't have this special ability, such as the ostrich, and they must walk or swim to get around. Birds have hollow bones, which help them fly. Birds also have air sacs that fill the spaces between other organs inside their bodies, which keep them lightweight. The shape of a bird's wings also play an important role in their ability to fly. When a bird moves through the sky, the air at the front of the wing separates as it flows over the surface of the wing. The air traveling over the top goes faster than the air at the bottom, and this creates a difference in air pressure. This pulls the wing at the top, pushes it from below, and creates lift. The force of lift keeps a bird up in the air while it flies. Their feathers are important too. The long feathers on the wings give it their shape. The tail feathers are used for steering, and the short feathers over the body create a streamlined shape. The short and fluffy feathers that are close to the bird's skin keep it warm. Did you know that birds are very smart? Some species have developed the ability to use tools to find food and build their nests. Birds have been around for millions of years. Many scientists believe that birds evolved from theropod dinosaurs. Believe it or not, the average chicken is thought to be the closest thing to a living relative of the Tyrannosaurus rex dinosaur. The next time you're outside, watch the skies and see what birds you see flying overhead. One thing that makes birds unique are their beaks, and there are many different types of beaks out in the world. So let's learn a little bit more with this awesome nonfiction book, The Beak Book, written and illustrated by Robin Page and read today with permission of Beach Lane Books and Simon & Schuster Publishing. Oh my, look at that beak. Bird beaks come in many different colors, shapes, and sizes. From the time they are born, birds use their beaks, sometimes called bills, in many unusual and amazing ways. This beak is for straining. The duck's soft flat bill filters seeds, plants, insects, and small animals from the muddy bottom of a pond or river. This beak is for sniffing. The kiwi's nostrils are located at the end of its long beak, and this allows it to sniff out earthworms and other underground snags. This beak is for tossing. The cormorant dives and snags a fish with its hooked beak, and then the bird comes to the surface and flips its prey into its mouth. This beak is for crushing. The shoebill stork's large, heavy beak is perfect for crushing lungfish, catfish, and the occasional lizard or baby crocodile. This beak is for cooling. The toucan's large beak radiates heat and cools the bird on hot days. This beak is for filtering. The flamingo turns its beak upside down to filter algae, insects, and shrimp from the water. This beak is for snapping. 
As it slashes its spoon-shaped beak back and forth in the shallow water, the spoonbill snaps up any prey that it touches. This beak is for stitching. The mother tailor bird uses her beak to sew a nest for her chicks. She stitches leaves together with spiderweb silk, forming a cozy nest. This beak is for prying. The crossbill uses its unusual beak to pry open a pine cone and eat the seeds that are inside. This beak is for stabbing. With a quick thrust of its deadly beak, the heron stabs a fish, frog, or other small animal. This beak is for ripping. The eagle has a powerful hooked beak for ripping its prey into bite-sized pieces. This beak is for probing. With its slender, curved beak, the ibis probes sandy shorelines and marsh grasses in search of prey. This beak is for skimming. Flying just above the surface, the skimmer dips the lower half of its beak into the water to snatch a fish. This beak is for plucking. The flightless takahe plucks leaves and grasses with its short, stout beak. This beak is for sipping. The hummingbird hovers in midair, sipping nectar with its long, thin beak. This beak is for climbing. The macaw uses its hook beak to grasp branches as it climbs a tree. This beak is for battling. Male hornbills use their impressive beaks in mating battles with other males. This beak is for drilling. The beak of the woodpecker has a sharp tip that can easily drill into a tree trunk to find the insects that are hiding beneath the bark. This beak is for scooping. Using the expandable pouch that is part of its beak, the pelican scoops up a fish. This beak is for shredding. A vulture's hooked beak is the perfect tool for tearing into a dead animal, the bird's favorite food. This beak is for clutching. The puffin uses its flexible hinged beak and the sharp spines that line its mouth to clutch several fish at the same time. That are mouthful. This beak is for tap, tap, tapping. and breaking out of an egg. Many baby birds use a special egg tooth that is attached to their beak to break out of their egg. And after a while, the egg tooth falls off. Pretty impressive. So many different types of beaks. And now it's time for steam. Our STEAM challenge today is going to demonstrate in a roundabout way how birds fly. So as I've already mentioned, most birds can fly. Not all birds. Penguins don't fly. Kiwi birds don't fly. But the majority of birds do fly. Birds are able to fly because they have extremely lightweight bodies. Did you know that their bones are hollow? They're filled with air and that makes them much easier to fight gravity and go to the skies. The fly birds also need wings and their wings are lined with feathers. And the core of a feather is also hollow and it has those little barbs that catch the air when they flap their wings, creating lift that allows them to rise up in the air. We have a steam kit in our lobby while supplies last with all the supplies you'll need to create your own whirly twirly balloon bird. But if you can't get our kit for whatever reason, you'll need the following supplies. A balloon, some feathers, a permanent marker, a clothespin or other clip. And lastly, you'll need some tape. In our kit, we wrap the tape around a straw so that it wouldn't stick to anything else. 
Let's head over to the craft table to learn how to make our whirly twirly birds. To make your whirly twirly bird, you're going to start by blowing your balloon up. Once your balloon is all blown up, don't knot it. Do twist the end. It makes it a little bit easier for the next step. Use your clothespin or other clip that you have and clip it right at the end to seal it. That's really important. Now you're going to get out your tape and if you have it from our kit, you're going to unravel it. Careful, it will stick to itself. There we go. And use your muscles to make two pieces of tape. Then you're going to take your feathers and put two on either side and secure them in place with the tape. Ta-da! Now use your permanent marker to draw on some bird features. Eyes, a beak, whatever you want your bird to have. Now we're ready to test our whirly twirly balloon bird to see if it can fly. But first, we're going to need a little bit more space than we have here. Make sure to have an open area for this next part. All right, friends, are you ready to test our whirly twirly birds? To launch your bird, you're going to need open space. And then you're going to put your bird in one hand, doesn't matter which one. Take your other hand and quickly unclip your clip. While doing that, also lift the arm that is holding the balloon to give that bird a little extra lift. Are you ready? One. Two, three! Wow! Did you see that? My bird flew all the way to the ceiling. Once you've done a successful flight, try it again, and then again, and again. And you can move the, the feathers around to see if that changes anything. You could try just one feather on each side, or put all the feathers on one side and see if that changes how your bird flies. Because all of these things are important. Birds create lift by flapping their wings. In this experiment, we're creating lift by filling the balloon with air and then releasing it. When we let go of the balloon, the air inside rushes out and pushes the balloon up into the air, much like a bird lifting off the ground. We would love to see any pictures or video clips of you doing this experiment or any of our other experiments. So please feel free to email them to pleasanthills at einetwork.net or post it to our special Facebook group, Pleasant Hills Library Virtual Programming. Well, my friends, we are reaching the end of our summer programming. In fact, this is our last STEAM Creatures program, but don't worry. We're going to have some more fun STEAM programs coming up in September. STEAM stories are coming back, which is pretty exciting. We're going to have some more other fun programs happening in September, too, in person, virtual, and outside. So make sure to check our social media and our website for more information. As a reminder, the library is open. We're recommending that you wear a mask inside for your safety and ours. But you can come and check out any of the materials or just come and say hi. We'd love to see you. Until I see you again, friends, stay safe and have a good day. Bye. Thank you.